basically the, the founding fathers of the city were looking at St. Petersburg to be a port city, to be a shipping capital of the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, not a tourist Mecca with these beautiful parks and palm trees and people strolling and walking their dogs. Luckily, William Schraub came along and, and forced the city council to, to start preserving the waterfront. And uh, it is truly our, 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 our most prized possession. And the marina, uh, the municipal marina, uh, grew uh, pretty pretty quickly in the late 1950s through the 1960s. The downtown area, especially Central Avenue, between 2nd and 9th streets, was the hub of commerce in the city. Whether you needed a haircut or whether you needed to buy shoes or whether you needed to buy a dress or a tie or whatever it was, you went to Central Avenue because that's where the, the hub of the commerce was. We talked about you know the, the Central Avenue being the, the center of commerce and, and it was from the beginning of St. Petersburg until that fateful day, in, uh, actually in 1950 when um, Tyrone Gardens opened. Uh, with the explosion of growth in the city in the 1950s, the, the suburbs were born, obviously. I and mean, we don't really consider them suburbs here in St. Petersburg because it's, it's kind of like all part of the city, but the different neighborhoods, especially heading out west towards Tyrone, were being added. A gentleman by the name of James Rosati got the idea of opening a shopping center, and he pretty much had a blueprint idea where he would have a grocery store, which just turned out to be Publix at the time, um, a drug store, various other stores um, that you need, an appliance store, some clothing stores, a five and dime type store. So he kind of had this cookie cutter kind of image and he built Tyrone Gardens. Um, shortly after that, uh, Central Plaza opened. Um, and then after that, you had Distant Plaza, Northeast Shopping Center, Southside Shopping Center, all these little shopping centers are opening up in the neighborhoods. So people didn't have to drive downtown anymore. And plus these shopping centers offered huge, massive free parking lots. Mm -hmm. And even now, I mean, it, it's difficult to find a parking spot downtown now. It was, it was worse back then because we didn't have parking garages back then. And the cars are twice the size that they are now. Uh, so the building of these shopping centers um, in the 1950s and 60s starts the decline of downtown. The businesses were starting to feel it. Um, their cash registers weren't opening as, as often as they used to. Um, so when the younger people, the families, were moving out into the suburbs and shopping out in the suburbs, downtown was left to the elderly and the retired. So the city was getting this incredibly old, retired image. And the buildings were old. I mean, a lot of the stuff that was built downtown was built turn of the century through the 1920s. Mm -hmm. It's now 1960s, so these buildings are getting 40, 50, 60 years old. Um, and, you know, it's Florida, so most of them didn't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. You know, so the heat, mm -hmm. right, the sun, the mold, everything starts taking over the humidity. Um, so downtown was looking tired, and um, they decided, uh, and it kills me because I love old buildings, um, and the, the, what the city has done is, a, back then, a pretty poor job of trying to um, save older buildings. In 1961, a lot of the business leaders got together and decided and put forth this plan that would um, basically turn St. Petersburg into a younger, cooler, hipper town. Um, so they started, you know, out with the old and the new. So a lot of the older buildings were starting to get leveled, and they were putting up new buildings. 1965, um, a few things had been done, but in 1965 it was a pretty big year, and this is, you know, families were were traveling more. The Florida's tourism industry was exploding in popularity. Uh, there were bridges open to the beaches, so the beaches were being built on the hotel, and that hurt downtown as well. Um, so the city uh, basically put together um, in addition to this plan that brought a lot of tourist type, type activity to downtown. So 1965 was a pretty big year. The Museum of Fine Arts opened. Um, the HMS Bounty arrived in St. Petersburg as a tourist attraction right outside our, our door here at the Museum of History. The Bayfront Center was opened um, on the waterfront to bring in professional hockey and all kinds of events, circus, concerts, the whole thing. Um, the University of South Florida opened their Bay Campus on Bay Pearl Harbor, um, mm -hmm. so you know, the, the city w was, was seriously behind that to attract college-age and younger people to come to St. Petersburg. And um, in 1967 was the big one. Uh, in 1967, they tore down the Million Dollar Pier, the actual structure that was on the pier. Um, it had been up since the early 1920s, and it, it symbolized 
the retirement elderly image of downtown because it became the city's senior center um, and uh, they decided it was time to go. So in 1967, they tore it down. So it, we struggled during this time period. Uh, the population of downtown St. Petersburg got older. The office buildings got emptier. Um, and it was basically, there, were, there was a lot of comments, and this is, you know, people who grew up and loved St. Petersburg would hear these comments on national television about St. Petersburg being, you know, the home of the newlywed or the nearly dead. And it was like driving a knife through our arts, you know. Um, so it, it, the city fought that image for a long time until finally magic happened. You know, Baywalk was built and Beach Drive was revitalized and all of a sudden downtown St. Pete became what they envisioned in 1961. So it was pretty amazing to watch. Look at the museums. I mean, the Dali Museum, Museum of Fine Arts, our museum at Chihuly. There are so many cultural things to do here, whether you like art or history or whatever it is, um, the nightlife has exploded here. So the, the tourism is different. And, and, I, and I think that we, 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 the city of St. Petersburg now offers any type of tourist a place to come. Now we've become, um, we've become a pretty hip city and, and it's everything that the city leaders had hoped we'd become.